Amen. How, how many of you have the joy of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have joy? You know, a couple of people last week asked me, when are you guys going to start doing Christmas song? And I thought, really? But you know what? If you have joy, we can sing Christmas songs. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Joy to the world, the Lord is ever is good amen he's good you know how many of you get busy during the holidays just busy you know and I was talking to the team in the back and I was saying you know sometimes we get so busy so wrapped up in things you get busy doing nothing you know how many of you know that's not good to be busy with nothing you know when you find yourself not having the time not having the time to get in the word not having the time to spend with your heavenly father to have that relationship with god amen you know i've been studying and in, in luke it talks about you know mary just just gave, gave birth to the baby jesus and they all came from everywhere and they were all saying you know everything that they've heard you know oh my goodness the savior of the, the world he's come and you know what she didn't say anything she kept it in she kept it in she pondered on it all and she sat there and just said, I can just imagine what's going on through her mind. 
life, you know, wow, the Savior of the world is here. You know, she was entrusted with that precious gift. Amen. And I sat there and thought to myself, what would, I, what would be going on in my mind if I was entrusted with that? Would, would I take it lightly? You know, no. I would have to surrender everything I have in order to have God control my life, in order for him to come and give me that precious gift. I would have to surrender everything first, amen? All over this place, let's just raise our hands to heaven. We surrender all to you, Jesus. We give you all control, Lord. All control, Lord. All to Jesus I, I surrender all, all to Him I freely give. And I will ever love and trust Him with my heart, in His presence daily be. Surrender. 
God, you are not just a promise to Mary, God. You are a promise to the world, a gift to the world. So this morning, God, we want to surrender everything. Saints, let's lift our hands to him. We want to surrender everything, God, that we are. Lord, we know you have a plan for us, God. You have purposes for us, Lord. So, Lord, today we surrender our past, our present, even our future hopes and dreams, God. We lay it at the feet of the cross, God. All of our pain, all of our brokenness, confusion, discouragement, sickness. God, we lay it at the foot of the cross this morning, God. And Lord, we receive all that you have for us, God. Your healing power, God, to heal us, to make us whole, body, mind, and spirit, God. We receive it all. God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus this morning. Come on, let's give him some praise in the house. Hallelujah! Woo! He is so good, so good. Are you happy this morning? Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord where the presence of God is? You know, when we gather together, we don't gather together just as a group of people. We gather together in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And where his presence is, there is his power. So whatever it is that you need this morning, he is in the house. Do not leave this place without just opening your heart to all that he has for you. If you need healing, if you need whatever it is that you need, open your heart this morning. You will not be disappointed. Amen. You will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to welcome you to the Rock Church Riverside, especially if it's your first time. Come on, family. And we always like to share just a little bit about our church. In case you don't know us, you don't know what we're about. Our church motto is always up on the screen, and it is loving people to life. Because how many of you know God is the most powerful force on the planet, and God is love. And we believe God's love is also the most powerful force on the planet because God is love. And we have been sent here to love you to life, to believe God for whatever it is that you need in your life, not to kick you when you're down, but to extend our hands to you. In fact, even as family, just to link arms with one another. Together, we are stronger. Together, there is nothing that can come against our lives. With Jesus in our life, there is nothing that can overcome us. Amen? Because he is light, and his light is pure, and it is constant. Amen? The greatest power on the planet. So you have walked into a church that is basically just a family of saints, believing God for one another and loving each other. Amen? It's a beautiful thing to see what God is doing in the hearts and lives of his people. Amen? So if it is your first time in front of your chairs, there are first time visitor cards. And those are there for three reasons. You can let us know how you found us. You can write down any comments. Lastly, most importantly, what I love to talk about is those prayer requests. Because God is moving in the hearts and lives of his people. People in this place have been delivered from drugs. They've been healed in their bodies. Their families are being restored. They're just experiencing God in a whole new way. You know, I, I got an email last week and I told first service, I literally, I don't know how it was possible, but during reading this email, I smiled like really big, like ear to ear smile. I cried. I got the chills. I mean, it blew my mind, the experience that this person had coming to our church one time. He was from another country and he returned back to his country and he said, I don't even understand what the heck's happening to me. All I know is I felt the love of God in that place and I feel that God has told me that if I will just follow him, that he's already beginning to heal me and he's beginning to set me free. And if I continue to follow him, he's gonna completely heal and set me free. And this man had been in bondage, just in bondage. And he said he had so much pain that he had carried for years and years. He said he, so much pain that he just felt he was hitting his head against the wall so much to the point that he was on the floor. But that he felt his savior picking him up and saying I'm going to take that pain from you and I'm going to completely heal you and man it was the most beautiful thing please share your testimonies with me when people are getting healed I mean they're telling me about it healed from diagnoses that the doctors said were impossible we're seeing it in this church guys God is alive and well and not only that we're praying against things you know people are going and having tests and procedures pray for us and guess what it's coming back with good reports God is on the throne amen so if you have anything that you're believing for, no matter what it is, you may think, oh, my prayer request isn't important. It's just because I want to get good grades in school. Is Grant in here? Is there a Grant here? I've been praying for Grant. He's in nursing school, and he's doing really well. I don't know who he is, but I'd love to know who he is because we've been praying for him, and he's just rejoicing over God's goodness and the fact that he's doing great in school. So it doesn't matter what it is. It can be something like that, or it can be that, man, I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just fall off the face of the earth. I'm in such a bad place. You know what? We want to lift your needs before the Lord and believe God with you. Amen. So what you can do is fill those out, and then later in the service when the offering buckets go by, just drop it in there. 
Our team of people tomorrow are going to be praying for you. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want you to go ahead and greet each other, but we are going to go straight into com uh, communion from here. So you can go ahead and greet each other and then find a seat and we're going to go straight into communion. Tom. We're so thankful that you're here today because we are going to have communion. We do this on the first Sunday of every month. I want to let you know, warn you right now, that you're going to be taking communion a few times this month. Praise God. Jesus said, Amen. do this often in remembrance of me. And he wasn't talking about sitting down and eating. Because <laughs> they were all eating. Do you get it? Oh, never mind. How many know uh, Heather told me today that she uh, wants to do something because, uh, because during the holidays, people have a tendency to gain 10 pounds. Seven. The average is seven pounds. Oh, average seven. From Thanksgiving me, to New Year's, yes. Because we go from fellowshipping to fellow shaping really quick during that's, the holidays. That's not the only reason I want to do it, babe. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry. I, just had a, I saw out one of, of the guys nowhere, out of Out of nowhere. Stay focused. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have a good time today in church, hopefully. Amen. And I believe today is going to be a challenging day for you. It's going to be a powerful day for you. It's also going to be something that's going to just get you. Some of us, you know, we get, need a kickstart. You know, we've got to pull that thing and get you going. Amen. And then some of us, we need to be told that uh, we're doing the right thing for Jesus. Amen. We're on track. Amen. But before we go any further, we're going to get right into communion. Communion is a special thing, but I want to share something with those that are here. Maybe you're new and you're a guest, amen? And we don't ever want to embarrass you, so we're not going to have you raise your hand. We're going to make you come to the front tell us who you are, though. No, we're not going to do that. And you were handed one of these cups, and maybe you came from a church that says, oh, you can't take communion in somebody else's church unless you're a member of that church. You know, my Bible doesn't say that. They want to believe that. That's okay. You know, some people want to believe that. That's all right. But here at The Rock, we don't, we, don't, we don't say that because that's not what our Bible tells us. That's not what the Word says. The Bible says when you gather together, amen, as a body of Christ. How many know you're a member of the body of Christ, amen? And if that's a hang-up, it's okay. I, you are, I make you honorary members today, amen, hallelujah, amen, because I want us to get together, take communion. Communion is more than juice and a piece of bread. It's community. It's coming together as family and breaking bread together, remembering the reason why we're here is to give all the honor to the King of kings and Lord of lords, that one day we're all going to make heaven our home, and we're going to be breaking bread for all eternity together, enjoying, enjoying each other's company forever. And oh, remember this, my beloved, that if there's anyone in the body of Christ that just bugs you and irritates you, remember, be careful, because that might be the person God puts you next to in eternity. <laughs> That'd be your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, it, you're going to, you, everyone should have received one of these. If you didn't grab, if you didn't get one on the way in, go ahead and raise your hand. Our wonderful ushers will hand you one. Also, we got some over here that didn't get one. Amen. Raise it up high so they can see you. And uh, some on my, on my, your guys is right. There's some over here. Go ahead and grab them some. Uh, some uh, they're coming. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're coming. They were handing some. There's one right here in the in the middle here. He didn't get one. One of these, uh, what this is, is that, oh, I want to remind you that in front of your seat, there's a little place for those that are sitting in the seats in the front where you don't get one. But uh, everyone else gets one. It's where you can put the cup after you're done. Amen. Um, there's a cellophane part. That's the part you're going to peel back first. And that is going to uh, have where the bread is. And you can pull that out. And then the, when we do the second part of the communion service, there's the plastic tab. Be careful with that. You pull that back. That's going to expose the juice. But if you have a young one with you, uh, make sure you do it for them. You don't want to get it on you or them on their Sunday's best today. Okay? Just want to give you a little instructions. 
Before we go any further, I want to read this portion of the scripture. Anyone else need a communion cup? Amen. There's no hurry. We just want to make sure we got together. This is a wonderful time. I'm going to read a portion of the scripture before we get right into it. And the reason why is because we want to get an understanding. For most of you, maybe you've heard me minister this before, and you're like, oh, I've heard that before. It's okay. It, we want to make sure everyone has a clear understanding of what the scripture says. It's important. Amen? The Bible says in verse 27 of us, 1 Corinthians 27, it says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And we read that and we go, oh my goodness, what is that? For he who, it says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself. Wow, that's pretty heavy. Not discerning, everybody say discerning. Discerning. Not discerning the Lord's body. And sometimes we read a verse like that and we think, oh my goodness. Now before I say anything else, I have to declare, clarify something. I believe when we take communion, it is a holy thing unto the Lord. It is something that should be respected. Amen? It should be something that when we take communion, that we're not just kind of flipping taking it. We're taking it because this is something that means something to us. It means something to the Lord. And we do it with respect. Amen? We do it with a, with, a, with, a, with a heart knowing what God's done for us. But what the verse is not saying, it's not saying that if you take it in a way that, well, you know, if I do this wrong, oh my goodness, you know, I better make sure I do it right. And you're like, oh, am I right? Father, forgive me of my sins. Okay, okay, am I right? You know, some people live and say, well, listen, that means that an unbeliever can't take communion. How many know what I'm talking about? Some people will say that too, but the problem I have with that, and, and if you want to believe that, that's okay, but the problem I have with that is why would God not want you to do something or have an unbeliever do something that's going to draw them closer to Him? Amen? That's, that's the question I have, the argument I have, but, but that's for a second, next time. What it means when it says, uh, uh, do this in an unworthy manner, to me personally, you don't have to receive it, but to me what this means is when when I try and take what Jesus did on the cross, it was what the Corinthian church was doing, they were taking what Jesus did on the cross and they were turning it into a, a ritual, a sacrament. They were saying, if I take this communion, I'm born again. I'm right with God. And let me tell you, my friend, taking communion does not make you right with God. You're not discerning the Lord's body because what you're doing is you're diminishing what Jesus did on the cross and putting it here. And saying, by taking communion, uh, because you know why people do that? Because we always want to work righteousness. A lot of people want to do that. They want to earn their salvation. They want to do something to be right with God. When you don't have to do anything to be right with God. You simply receive Jesus as your Savior. But how many know what I'm talking about? You get saved and then you, and then you think you got to do something to make God like you better. To get, get God to like you more. How many know God loves you regardless? Amen. Even while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. So how are you going to get him to like you more? I like I these like kind of mics. Kind of Hallelujah. More power. Power to you. Amen. But what it's saying here is not that we want to make sure, though, before we do take communion, that because I, I don't want anyone to come into this place and think, well, I came to church today and I took communion. I'm OK with Jesus now. See, that would be the wrong thing because taking communion doesn't get you right with God. So with that said, we want to make sure you're right with God. So that then when you take communion, it means something. Amen. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And perhaps you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Savior. Maybe today you've never had an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Savior. See, Jesus didn't die on a cross just so that people could just go to church or call themselves Christians or, call, or, or just to say, well, I did something right. Jesus went to a cross to die for mankind so that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. Jesus went to a cross to give you salvation. 
in which all you have to do is say yes to Jesus. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And maybe perhaps today you're here and you've never received Jesus as your Savior. The Bible says if you want to make heaven your home, you must be born again. So if that's you, I want to give you this opportunity. Romans 10, 9, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess. So would you say this with me, this confession of faith? If that's you, you want to be born again, you want to receive Jesus, say, Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me of all my sin. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. To give me a new life. To give me a new life. And I accept you now. And I accept you now. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time of communion as we remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. And we give you, Lord, all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And I just wanted to say one other thing that I shared with first service. You know, a lot of times the enemy will lie to us and tell you that you have to be perfect to take communion. But how many of you know we will never be perfect? Jesus was perfect. He was the spotless lamb and he died on that cross for us. And communion to me, yes, we are breaking bread together, but we are literally communing with the Father right now. It is taking a moment and just drawing near to him. And to me, it's like I just shut everything else out and think about God, you died on that cross. We are remembering that amazing sacrifice that that and that alone is what causes us to be righteous before God. Not our own works. We fail every time when it comes to our own works. But the blood of Jesus, and not only that, his body that was broken for our healing. And Pastor Tom can talk about that. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that, I, I, I got to read it because you got to hear it. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word. Amen. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. How many have ever felt sorrowful? He, and, but yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. In other words, we thought, they thought maybe God was mad at him and punishing him. But he was not punished. In verse 5 it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisements of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, you, we are healed. By his stripes, his broken body was broken for you, for your healing. You were healed 2,000 years ago. See, when you need a miracle, God's not going to create a new miracle for you. When you need a miracle, if you need a healing, God's not going to create a new healing for you. He already gave that healing. All you have to do is reach out and receive that healing. It's already been done. It's not, it's not something new. It's already done. You just got to receive it. Now, today, as you take communion, how many? raise your hand if you need a healing in your body. I want you to say this. Say this. Say today. Today. I receive. I receive my healing. My healing. Today. Today. I will. I will be made whole. Be made whole. Today. Just today. I will not have pain. I will not have pain. I will not have symptoms. I will not have symptoms. After I take communion. After I take communion. I am healed. I am healed. And I received it now. And I receive it now. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord. How many believe that? Amen. You see, some people say, well, Jesus said it. I believe it. That settles it. I say it like this. Jesus said it. That settles it. Amen. Amen. You receive your healing today. And I believe in putting time limits. Jesus even did that. He said, go and you will be healed. Go and wash and you will be healed. Do this and you will be healed. In other words, begin the walk of faith and you're going to be healed. I believe today, when you leave today, you're going to be completely healed. Amen. Receive Amen. It. Go ahead and... For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead and take that bread out. Father, we thank you for the bread. Jesus is the bread of life, the manna from heaven. We partake of that, Lord, and we thank you for his body that was broken for us so that we could receive our healings. 
as well as divine health we can have. And Father, we do this in remembrance of what you did for us on that cross. In Jesus' name, let us partake. Thank you for the cross that you carry. And thank you for the blood that was shed. You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders and sacrificed your life so I could live. Now nothing is holding me back from you, Redeemer of my soul. took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me thank you father for the blood of jesus that was shed for our sins to redeem us cleanse us wash us and make us new again we thank you father for the blood of jesus that forgives us and lord we say that if you never done another thing for us except to die on a cross and shed your blood so that we can have the forgiveness of sins our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It would be more than enough to follow you and worship you and thank you all the days of our lives. So, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, and we do this in remembrance of you, Lord. Amen. Let us partake. And thank you Let's all stand for and worship your him. death and resurrection. Hallelujah. And thank you for the of your blood and I am overwhelmed by your affection the kindness and the greatness of your love sing it again the kindness the kindness and the greatness of your love now nothing is holding Jesus for your goodness in our hearts and lives and we thank you for all you've done for us in Jesus name amen come on let's give Jesus praise amen so why don't you say hello to somebody I know you already said some hello to someone else but say hello to somebody else and find us as we get ourselves ready for service Somebody's car is alarming outside. I can hear it. And maybe one of the ushers can go see, and then we can get the uh, license plate. Amen. Hello. Jesus is the reason for the season, isn't he? Amen. And we're having a great time in church today as we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Yesterday, we had a wonderful men's breakfast. Woo! 
man, it was so exciting. We had a Julio Cesar Green, third three-time uh, uh, former world champion boxer came, and uh, he shared his testimony. As a matter of fact, he, he, he doesn't speak English, so right now he's actually preaching in the Spanish church right now. And so he's over there ministering in the Spanish church. And because uh, if he came in here, we'd need an interpreter. And uh, but uh, he's going to talk. He ta shared a little. He shared yesterday his testimony with the men. And then we have a, a wonderful, beautiful friend that came and ministered, Pastor Nati Alvarado from Word of Life. Amen. Amen. And oh my goodness, he just tore it up, had a great time uh, hearing his testimony and all that God's done for him, how God totally delivered him from, uh, from heroin. He was in prison and God just squashed everything and set him free. And God has done a miracle in his life. And they've got a wonderful church, him and his wife, beautiful wife, Teresa Alvarado, a word of life in Orange County. As a matter of fact, we were blessed to be invited to her 50th birthday celebration. And I tell you what, it is true. Any excuse, when you're Mexican, any excuse for a party. And man, they lit it up. Man, they had a ball, masquerade ball. But I was kind of confused because it was a masquerade ball. But they were playing, you know, that, that kind of music, you know? I was like, wait a minute, they didn't play that kind of music back then. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God. We're just having a good time. I tell you what, when we get saved, amen, you go from party, from partying to partying. Amen. And uh, hallelujah. Amen. Well, today we're going to, I've entitled this message called Gone Fishing. Everybody say Gone Fishing. How many like to go fishing? Raise your hand. How many ladies like to go fishing? How many like sushi? How many don't like sushi? Keep your hands up. You don't like sushi, keep your hand up. Only put your hand down if you've tried sushi. If you haven't tried it, keep it up. If you, no, if you haven't tried it, keep it up. Taste and see that the sushi is good. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what. So we had this fishing trip a while back with all the men. And uh, at this fishing trip, we went, uh, we got all the guys together, and we're going to be doing it again soon. And uh, we went deep sea fishing. Have anybody gone deep sea fishing before? Oh, man, it was so exciting. And uh, we, uh, we went on that deep sea fishing trip. Some of the guys got a little sick. Some of us, you know, we manned up. We were good to go. Amen? And, you know, it was a good fishing trip. We actually caught a lot of fish. And as a matter of fact, this one guy, I won't mention his name, but his initials are Richard. caught a shark and so he pulls this shark on the boat I mean it's a leopard shark you know and we're like wow check that out you know and I thought man they're probably gonna throw it back I mean it's a shark for crying out heck no they chopped it all up and he took home uh, shark steaks amen and he didn't share any of them with me but uh, we had a good time uh, fishing and you know it's always fun you know the part that most people don't like about fishing is cleaning the fish and, but, you know, when you go on those boats, you know, for a little tip, they'll clean the fish for you, and they do a really good job, you know? Well, today we're going to be talking about going fishing. Look at your neighbor and say, going fishing. Look at your other neighbor and say, going fishing. Look behind you and talk to the neighbor's back of their head and tell them, going fishing. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your goodness in our hearts and lives. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God as it goes forth today that it does not come back void or empty, but it accomplishes that which you have called it to accomplish. And Lord, we come today hungry for the word of God, but not to hear from a man. We come to hear from the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, have your way, teach us, lead us, guide us, direct us in all that the Father would have us to know. And not only us, Lord, we lift up all the churches that are preaching the gospel in the Inland Empire, Orange County, Riverside, all around the world. We thank you, Lord, that we are all part of a wonderful body of Christ. And we give you, Lord, all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. 
Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, as we've been going through the red letters of Jesus. And now we're getting to the point where Jesus is going to be sharing some things. Last week, uh, I wanted to clarify a couple of things. One of the things, we talked about repentance last week. I want to encourage you that repentance and conversion go hand in hand. Amen. That it, but it's because of conversion that we can repent. How many know you can't repent if there's no Jesus? Amen. There's, and what do, I, what do I mean by that? Because repentance doesn't mean you're sorry. Let me say that again. Repentance does not mean you're sorry. Even though the Bible talks about that, in, 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 about having a, almost a, a, a sorrowful uh, uh, um, motion. But repentance does not mean sorry. Repentance means change of mind. You can't have a change of mind without a conversion. I know because I tried it. Anybody ever tried to change? And you couldn't until Jesus came into your life? Then he gave you the power to change. Amen? Amen. So I wanted to make sure that was clarified from last week in case there was a misunderstanding. Uh, you know, because, you know, sometimes I'll preach a subject and I'll get off the stage and the devil will lie to me. Say, oh, man, that was weird. You know, he can't preach that. That's crazy. And I'm going, shut up, devil. Amen. Eh. Amen. So I want to make sure because if he told me that, he might have told you that too. Amen. All right, so James, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. Everybody say casting. For they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. I love that part. He said, follow me and I will make your bank account better. Is that what he said? He said, follow me and you'll have a happy, joyful life forever. Is that what he said? No. You notice Jesus didn't say, follow me and everything's going to be good. Because I know for most of us, we come to Jesus with a consumer mentality. Not you guys, the other guys. What can Jesus do for me? Amen? People, did you know people go to church for those reasons too? They go to church with their list. Anybody ever been looking for a church before? I, I, I remember looking for a church one time. And I, when, I, when I first was looking for a church, I would always have my list with me. All right. Let's see what this church has for me. Do they have this? Check. Do they have something for my children? Do they give an altar call? Check. Do they get, believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yeah, oh, that's a big. Check. Is the pastor available? Check. Is there... Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if I didn't, they didn't pass the list, it was like, eh, you know, nope, not that one. How many know the enemy will make sure you don't pass that list? Amen. Amen? The enemy will always make sure that that church is going to have something on that list that doesn't agree because he doesn't want you to get planted. And, and, and always remember that sometimes the, you, you'll find a place and the thing that you carry on your shoulder, that's what the enemy will make sure you run into. You'll run into the mean usher. Ah, I'm offended. You know, when I was growing up in Christian church, we never even heard the word offended. We didn't even know what that was. We used to say, I'm convicted, but we changed it to offense. Amen. That was for free. All right. Do you notice what it says here? They immediately, see, oh, let me, let, me, let me finish my statement. You should never look for a church to see what the church has for you. You don't look for a church because it fulfills your list. What does the church have for me is not the right reason to find a church. Is, is this where God wants me to be? That's the right way to find a church. Lord, is this where you want me to be? I, I don't, I'm not worried about all those things. Those things will take care of themselves. Is this where you want me to be? Amen? Is that, is that all right? Y'all looking at me strange. All right. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Do you notice they didn't pray about it? They didn't pray about it. 
Jesus came, follow me. I need to pray about that. How many know sometimes there are things that you don't need to pray about? Not everything you have to pray about. I, met, I know so many people sometimes they spend more time praying than doing. And they never do anything because they're praying all the time. I got to pray about that. I got you. How many know we know? Come on. We know when God's called us to do something. We've got to do what God's called us to do. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. They left their boat and they left their father and followed him. I believe it was because they, they saw something in Jesus, not something on the outside of Jesus. Because you know that Jesus was not an attractive person? I'm sorry. He was not Fabio Jesus. Like we see in the movies with the blue eye, long wavy hair. You know, and they put him on the cross. He's got a couple little marks and he still looks cute on the cross. Jesus was not, actually the Bible actually says he was not like this great looking guy. He was a common man. He looked like a normal guy. He didn't show up to the disciples and say, hey, oh, follow me. <laughs> and I will make you, you know, the little thing on his head. Watch out, Rocky. Amen. He said, follow me and I will make you not rich, not wealthy, not successful, even though those things are good. It's okay. He didn't say, follow me and I will make all, everything better. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that was more than enough for these guys to stop what they were doing and follow him. I, get, I could be a fisher of men. You know what Jesus was really saying when he said that? He was saying this, follow me and you will be just like me. Follow me if you want to be just like me. See, if you want to be like me, and you, you follow my pattern, follow my ways, be with me, stay with me, stand by me, and, and I'll be the example and you keep your eyes on me. Don't look at anyone else, just keep your eyes on me. Follow me my footsteps and you're going to be just like me because I'm a fisher of men. Jesus came to win the lost. Amen? And he's notice he didn't say, first guys, take a course on world evangelism. He didn't say, first, before you can follow me and be used to be a fisher of men, you got to go to cemetery school. I mean, seminary school. Don't worry, we have a Bible college here. <laughs> when I used to teach Bible college, I would tell the students, I said, listen, and you students that are in class right now, listen to what I'm telling you. When you graduate from Bible college, the, the Holy Spirit's not going to come upon you and sprinkle you with Holy Spirit fairy dust, and all of a sudden you're now a, a preacher of the gospel. <laughs> Hello? He said, follow me. Be like me, act like me, respond like me, do what I do, is what he was saying. And eventually, even, inevitably, you will become a fisher of men just like me. Notice what Peter was doing before he was called. What was Peter doing before he was called? He was casting a net. And you notice what John was doing when he was called, he was mending a net. And as a matter of fact, later on, J Peter is found as well washing a net. And I thought as I looked at that and the Lord began to show me that there are going to be different avenues and different things that God's going to call us to do. And some of you will be called to be net casters. Some of us may be called for a season, maybe long term, to be net menders, and others may be called to be net washers. And I thought, you know, that's exactly the gospel. Amen? Isn't that the gospel? Yes. 
that every one of us will have a different calling, different place in the body of Christ. One person said, you know, I, I, you know, uh, uh, you know they, I asked them if they, if they would want to help in children's church. And they said, I'm not called to do children's church. I looked at it and said, what do you know what you're called to do? I said, he said, I'm not called to do children. I said, and I said, really? I said, that's funny because I was an evangelist. I was a church planner. And then, God, and then someone asked me to do children's church. And I took it just like that and said, sure, I'll do it. Because I realized something. Whatever God puts in front of me, that's what I'm called to do. Amen? Amen? Whatever God puts in front of me, that's what I'm called to do. Some people are called to be net casters. Some people are called to be net menders. I love Heather. Everybody love Heather? Yeah. Someone called her, someone called her, uh, what did they call you today? I won't say it. <laughs> Nick. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't want it. She's embarrassed. All right, so. You know, Heather and I are, are two different kinds of people sometimes. Sometimes she's called, I'm called to be a net caster. She's called to be a net mender. Sometimes we're called to, some of us are called to catch fish. Some of us may be called, maybe seasonally catch fish. Sometimes we may be called to clean the fish. Amen? And we always have to be willing and able to do whatever God's called us to do. In Ephesians chapter 4, 11... The Bible says that he himself gave some to be apostles. Apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some could say that these three are the net casters. They're the ones that are going to catch the fish. You know, they used to always say, you know, be careful when you have an evangelist come to your church because it's going to come in, blow up, and blow out. And then the pastor got, has to come and put everybody back together, you know. And it says, he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists. But then he goes on, and some pastors and teachers. I, 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 and then the second part, verse 12, I really feel, and you don't have to take it if you don't want it, but I feel like verse 12 may be connected more to pastors and teachers than it is to apostles, prophets, and evangelists. Because when a prophet, apostle, and evangelist goes and catches the fish, but it's the pastors and the teachers that clean the fish, that get the fish prepared, that work with the people. Amen. Because then it goes in verse 12, it says, For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know what that means right there? That as a pastor and a teacher, we're called to equip you for the work of the ministry. Did you know that you're a full-time minister? You may not get paid, but you're full-time. Amen? Your reward is in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a full-time minister. Look at your other neighbor and say, I'm a full-time minister. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So in other words, you know, we, you get groomed and you get raised up in the church, but the purpose of getting raised up in it, listen, how many know... Come on now, you're getting too quiet on me. How many know you're supposed to grow this way, not this way? And I'm talking spiritually. Because I know a lot of spiritually overweight people. Spiritually, they're, they're big, they got a lot, but they're doing nothing with it. Hello? They have all the knowledge. They're filled with the Word. They go to every seminar, every, every type of a seminar, every conference. They go to this speaker. They, they, they're church hoppers. They're going for this church. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, there's a preacher over here. Let's go hear from them. Oh, and then they roll. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go to this fire. Wow, I want some of this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a, oh, there's a seminar over here. Oh, oh, oh. They're teaching the book of Revelations over here. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. Y'all thinking, keep that guy away from coffee. <laughs> and they're always ever learning. You get so much. But, you, but, but some people, not you guys, the guys on the camera. But you do nothing with it. There, that's what I'm talking about. We're called to be doers of the word. Devil's mad. <laughs> Not just hearers of the word. Amen? 
doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And Jesus says, I'm called you to be fishers of men, not just filled up spiritually. You have all the knowledge and all the... How many know? In America, we have so much access to knowledge. We can go online. We got Kindle books. We got all sorts of books and YouTubes and apps and, and everything. And oh man, wow, heavy revies, hallelujah. But the average Christian just so little to win the nation to Jesus. I tell you what, the problem with what you see on the news and the media and all the things that are happening, the problem isn't the world. Can I be real with you? The problem is the church. The church isn't doing what it's called to do. Did you know that the average Christian tells one person about Jesus a year? If that. And I'm talking about not saying, hey, I'd like to invite you out to church. I'm talking about sitting down and saying, hey, can I share something with you? You know, Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. Did you know the average Christian doesn't do that anymore? They know it all up here, but there's no action. Jesus says, I've called you. I didn't call you to just get fat and happy, full of knowledge and wisdom. I said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And I've sent you, I've called you, I've anointed you, I've given it to you. I'm relying on you to share this good news to the entire world. How many know Jesus is not going to come back to tell someone about Jesus? Amen. Jesus is not going to come back to tell everybody, okay, okay, you guys don't want to do it, you're, you're not ready for that. Okay, everybody, let me tell you something, you need to be born again. Jesus gave you that, the Great Commission. That's a good thing. You know why it's called a commission? It's co-mission. You and Jesus, co means two. You and Jesus on a mission to touch the world for Jesus. Amen. See, the world's not the problem. It's the, it's, the, it's the body of Christ that's not doing its job. Did you know that if we did more evangelizing, more sharing, I'm not talking about bringing Bible thumper. Don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about standing in front of a, you know, a, 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 a place with a big, big uh, you know, picketing sign saying, foul, wretched, ugly sinners, repent. Ah! <laughs> Amen. Did you know that, that if more Christians did what we were called to do, we'd have less problems in the world? Amen. Some nations in the world, they preach like crazy, and they have less of the word than we have. Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That was the primary call of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The primary call of Jesus was not just to be a, a happy Christian. It, what, what does Jesus say? And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and over all the regions of the earth. You know what witness means? Martyr. It means martyr. Jesus says, you are the light of the, on a hill. You know, I believe that song in Sunday school is not written correctly. I believe that song affected all of us. This little light of mine. How many know what I'm talking about? In Sunday school, we used to sing this song. This little light of mine. See, and we made a little light, li little, little light. You see my light? It's right here. <laughs> my little light. Jesus didn't say be a little light to the world. Did Jesus say that? He didn't say be a little light, be an LED. <laughs> you know what light they used back there? It was a flame of fire. Yes. Amen. Jesus says, I called you to be a light to the world. Not to the few, you know, people in front of you only. 
to the world. That tells me, a, you know, a candlelight. You know, when you see a, 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 a spotlight, it'll say, you know, 1,000 candlelights. A candlelight will only go so far, and you can't see it anymore. And when you start adding candlelights together, it creates a bigger light. Jesus didn't say to, to, you're just a, you know, to light just a little candle and put it on a hill. He says, I want you to be a light to the world. Nobody takes that candle, sticks it on a hill, puts a cover over it. You can't do it. We're called to be a light to the world. That means together we're a light. As believers, we're a light. Amen? And they all looking at me, I was, are we going on an on a, on a outreach tomorrow now, Pastor? <laughs> I always want to say this, you know, when we have outreaches, I want to go buy those glasses with the nose and the mustache. Maybe more people will show up. <laughs> that was for free. Amen. <laughs> all right, let me, let me hurry up. You guys are getting mad at me. Amen. Jesus says to him, to John in chapter 21, so when he, they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. You know what that means to feed lambs? Babies. We're called to feed babies. We're called to minister to young ones. And what do you feed a baby? Do you feed them steak? No, but you know, sometimes people do that. You know, they want to take a little baby lamb and they want to say, eat this. And they're choking on it. And he says, Simon, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. In other words, take care of them. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter grieved because he had said a third time, do you love me? And he said, you know, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. And he said to him, feed my sheep. Do you notice that he's asked Jesus to partake in different levels of someone's growth? He says, Peter, there's going to be times where I'm going to ask you, I'm going to require of you to, to break it down to feed lambs. Then there's going to be times I'm going to call you to, to tend my sheep, to take care of them, to, to heal their wounds, to love on them. That's what I love about Heather. She's a, she's a, she tends the sheep. You know, she wants to love on them. And then there's some that, then there'll be times where you'll be called to feed the sheep. And sometimes it can all take place in the same day. Amen? And so when we are those, in those places and we know where we're called, God will take care of the rest. Amen? And when we do what God's called us to do, God will take care of everything else. Did you know the most active Christians are the ones that don't go through as many trials and tribulations or setbacks? They, they, they go through the same amount. Let me rephrase that. They go through the same amount, but they're not taken down by them because they're actively involved doing what God's called them to do. It's the ones that are not doing anything. Come on, come on, let's be real. And when you're not actively doing what God's called you to do, you hit a trial, you're like, what do I do? But if, you, but if we are actively doing what God's called us to do, we're actively ministering, we're actively telling someone about Jesus, actively you know, participating in the church and doing the work of the ministry, amen, doing what God's called us to do. You know, when we're actively doing that, trials and tribulation are not as big as you they feel. Amen. That's how you become an overcomer. Is that all right? Amen? Because you're getting quiet on me, and I, I'm just going to get worse if you stay quiet. <laughs> amen? You know... And he says to take care of them, love on them. I love what it says right here in, in regards to doing what God's called us to do in Luke chapter 10, 38. It says, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, Luke 10, 38. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him in, into her house. And, and she had a sister called Mary, and who also sat at the feet, of the, uh, feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> I think they left one out. Because <laughs> we all know Marsha, 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 you know. Martha, Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, 
See, when you, fall, when you do what God's called you to do, you're not distracted by what someone else isn't doing. When you're called to do what you're to do, you're not distracted by what others are not doing. Amen? Amen? Amen. How come when I went on this outrage, nobody showed up to the outrage but me? See, when you're called to do what you're called to do, you're not concerned about what people are not doing. How come others don't pick up people and bring them to church like I do? Jesus! And Jesus is looking down saying, Martha, Martha, Martha. Just do what you're supposed to do. How come others don't clean like, they don't show up to ch clean the church? I'm the only one. If you just do what you're told to do, God will take care of that. How come they don't disciple people like I do? I believe God said to us in Hebrews chapter 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, lay aside every weight and every sin that easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. In other words, we stay in our lane. Amen? We don't ever worry what others are doing. Just like Jesus told, uh, told Peter, Jesus says, if, uh, if this other disciple who was John or Luke, if this other disciple remains till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Amen? See, John was not like Peter, and Peter was not like John. Jesus is saying, stay in our lane. Stay in your lane. And, and only do what God's called you to do. Listen, I, I tell you, I'll be honest with you. Just because someone's a good Bible study leader doesn't make them a preacher or a pastor of a church. Just because someone can, is a good preacher does not mean he's a great singer, and aren't you glad? Because when I get the mic, I see Rocky in the corner going, don't sing. I learned this a long time ago. Paul. Paul. I learned this a long time ago. Oh, I got to say something. Aren't you happy when someone knows they're not a good singer? <laughs> the worst is someone who thinks they're a good singer and they can't sing. And they're like, put me in the front. Mm -mm. <laughs> I love you enough to tell you the truth. <laughs> Amen. You played the cowbell. <laughs> what was that? I saw something up here. Did you have a toy up here? Somebody had a little thing up here. There was one little, I don't know what it was. It was gone. It's not there now. It was there earlier. Okay, listen. Always remember this. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. Jesus called us to do what we're called to do. We have like, like how, how many were here on Wednesday when those guys got to preach on Wednesday? Wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that a good time? You know, we sat together and I, and I asked them as we were just kind of hanging out and I was sharing some stuff as a, their pastor and, and it wasn't a close thing, you know, I had, you know, I, I, but a, a, later it became kind of a close thing because I had shared something with them. I said this to them, I said, how many of you have ever preached in front of people before? And they said, none of them raised their hand. And I said, I said, how many would like to preach in front of somebody? And they kind of like raised their hand, all right. He goes, I'll let you see what it's like. I go, we'll pick a Wednesday and I'll give each of you eight minutes. You can get in front of people and see what it's like to preach in front of people. They're doing this. Oh, are you serious? Well, you want it? Let's do it. I said, don't worry, the pastor won't get mad. I'll let you guys try it, see what it's like. Then they'll appreciate it more. And so after they were done, I said, try, that was seven minutes. Try, try 35, 40 minutes. <laughs> Amen, that was for free. <laughs> they like, you know, some people like the idea, but when you actually have to do it, it's not what you think. Amen. It says, but this is one thing I've learned a long time ago. Whatever God's put in your heart that you're called to, that's what you're called to. You stay in your lane. You stay focused on what God gave to you. And when you do that, you will be fulfilled. See, to the evangelist, Mr. Evangelist, Miss Evangelist, listen to me. There will never be enough evangelism. But that doesn't mean you don't do it. To the prayer warrior in the house, there will never be enough prayer for you. I get people at the door and say, Pastor, there's not enough prayer. There's never going to be enough prayer. Pastor, there's, there's not enough, you know, uh, worship. We need more worship in heaven. There, there'll never be enough worship for you. 
to the prophet, there'll be never enough prophecies and, and gifts of the Holy Spirit moving for you. To the disciple, there'll never be enough discipleship for you. Because as a church, we are diversified. As a church, we have different things going on all the time. We cannot stay focused on just one thing. See, to the missionary, there'll never be enough missions in the church. But if God's called you to do that, if God's put it in your heart to evangelize, if God's put it on your heart to disciple, just stay your lane, do what you're called to do, and God will take care of the rest. Amen? If you got something to, for Jesus, from Jesus today, let's give him a praise. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, listen, if you got something from Jesus, why don't we bless him by bringing him his tithes and our offerings in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's give him a praise for that. Amen? I have uh, asked earlier, and I want to just share before, don't